This is The Randy Rhodes Show on 960 KNEW and online at 960KNEW.com. It's Monday, Chick-fil-A holes, and it's BS News for this final day of July 2012, and away we go. Dateline, Twitch, Olympics. Mitt Romney's visit to London was a disaster after he made comments that offended the British. On Friday, Romney attended the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, where, somewhat surprisingly, he managed to wave to the crowd without accidentally flipping anyone the bird. Mitt isn't exactly a good fit with the British people. They only keep a stiff upper lip. Well, everything about Mitt Romney is stiff. Well, almost. He probably owns that company, too. The opening ceremonies included a salute to Great Britain's National Health Service, probably because highlighting health care is the best way to embarrass Mitt Romney without actually driving around the stadium with a dog strapped to the roof of a car. Hmm. The Olympic opening ceremonies were described as everything from eccentric to outright weird. Interesting factoid, if you exactly synced up the video of the opening ceremonies with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, you still have no idea what it was all about. Take time. Oi, vacation. After telling the British he he wasn't quite sure if they were ready to host the Olympics. Mitt jetted off to Jerusalem, where he was extra careful not to tell them that he didn't know if they weren't quite ready to host the apocalypse. And finally, Dateline, Olympiki. A new study shows that television coverage for women's sports tends to focus on those sports where the women wear the least clothing. And that explains why you won't be seeing any coverage of the women's Olympic medieval jousting events. Oh, damn. I could go on, but I won't. It's BS News for Monday. Have a great week. Don't the Saudis have a woman? What is her sport? Judo. Judo, right. Of course, Saudi judo. I mean, how I didn't put those two together, I don't know. Yeah, they have a, a woman who's doing judo, but uh, they won't let her play in the games if she doesn't take off her abaya. She's wearing a head-to-toe abaya, and uh, she has a decision to make. You know, all these uh, Islamic countries, they all have decisions to make. It's so interesting. They all have Ramadan to deal with and whether or not the bodybuilders want to go without eating. And then you've got the judo lady from Saudi Arabia. She's got to make a decision whether or not she'll do judo in her abaya. I say let her wear her abaya. I would love to see her do judo in the abaya. It would look like a Stephen King novel. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something alive in there. Oh, my God, it's alive. You know? Oh, God. A Bachman nightmare. The woman in the abaya that can kick your ass. Oh, my God. I say let her, leave her alone. Let her wear what she wants to wear. Uh, but, yeah, all these uh, Islamic countries, they have all these things that they have to decide, all these things. Meanwhile, uh, you know, Israel had no problem uh, deciding that they were not going to have Mitt Romney fundraising during Tisha B'Av. Now, Tisha B'Av, I will admit, is one of those not well-known Jewish holidays. It's not as big as, you know, the <laughs> Yom Kippur. It's not as big as... <laughs> You know, Rosh Hashanah. It's uh, it's not up there with Hanukkah. It's not. It's not one of the better known that we have. It's kind of a Purim-y thing, except Purim is a, is a celebration, and this is another fasting, mourning, grieving, atoning. You know, we're, we we become British for a while, is what it is. And uh, he wanted to do his fundraiser, Mr. Culture, Mr. I Love the Jews, Mr. He thinks he's part of the lost Jewish tribes, which is news to the Jews, I got to say. We didn't know we lost Mormons. We didn't know we had them, and then we lost them, and now we have them again. We didn't know that. We didn't know we lived in America thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. We did not know that. And we also did not know that Mitt Romney and his kind were baptizing us after we're dead. And that he was going to have a fundraiser on Tish above tells you that even in the most basic decisions that he makes, the, the, the simplest decision to fundraise or not to fundraise in Israel during a atonement holiday is beyond his uh, ability to grasp. So, you know, look, we don't need another one of these guys. We don't need another front run and douche. We don't need a, f a fabulous fake. OK, he is a genuine artificial CZ is what he is. He's a diamond out. He's just so fake. He's so phony. He's such a liar. I can't even stand it. You know, and, and, and he goes to our, you know, he's, oh, I'll protect our allies. I'll be. Britain is our longest, most staunch ally in the world. Whenever we go to war, they go to war. And they're calling Mitt the twit. Now, we're not as good at rhyming as the British are, uh, but I think that you can all think of something that rhymes with Mitt that he is. 
Mitt is rhymes with Mitt. Uh, but the cover of Newsweek did everything they could not to call him that word. So they came up with a four letter word for him. And uh, they just ran this headline called The Wimp Factor and put it on the cover of Newsweek. And I got to tell you, and this is going to surprise a lot of my conservative friends. It's not fair to call Mitt Romney a wimp. Because it totally ignores how much of a douche he is. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. 